This episode of Test Drive is made possible by RateMyEV.com. Welcome back to another episode of PRN Test Drive. I'm your host, Niall, and today we're doing something different. I'm taking this 2025 Ford F-150 Lightning Lariat and putting a trailer on it. Now, the gross vehicle weight rating of this is 8,850 pounds. Max trailering that you're going to be looking at when it comes to the extended range Lightning is about 7,700 pounds. And I believe my U-Haul trailer on the back is about 2,200 pounds. Now, I don't want to put 5,000 pounds into that trailer. They're saying I should keep it around 34, and that's more than enough for what I'm going to be doing today. But our goal is to see how this vehicle compares with a trailer on the back. I picked this up. I got 28 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers on my test loop that was better than every other lightning i've done when we did the 24 lariat that was 32 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers the platinum also 32 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers and then the flash that i had 29 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers it's also been kind of nice it's warmer today's actually kind of cool so i think the battery was at the perfect temperature to get us excellent results now that means i could do about 475 kilometers on a full charge with the trailer we're gonna see so we're gonna be loading it up, putting as much as I can into it. We have about 1,700 pounds of payload capability on this truck as well. So we will try to maximize both the trailer as well as the bed and see how this does. I have about 120 kilometer drive to do with this vehicle. People say that you lose about half of the range with a trailer. It doesn't matter how heavy it is. doesn't matter how big it is. Any trailer adds about a 50% decrease to your overall range. Let's put that to the test. All right, my friends, you're joining us. I'm about halfway through our trip. I've done 55 kilometers. I still have 67 kilometers to go. Before I talk about how that has been, let's talk a little bit about this Lariat. Compared to the 24 that I drove, the base MSRP hasn't changed. It's the same starting price for 2025. Our as tested price is just a little different as we have a couple different options on this vehicle compared to the one that I drove last. And yeah, I mean, you're getting all the real equipment that you need on this vehicle. 102,000, a little pricey. I, I understand that, but you've got pretty much everything that you need. Heated and ventilated front seats. You've got blue cruise, blind spot, adaptive cruise control. I've got built-in navigation, 360 cameras, wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. I mean, you've got everything that you need. Plus the panoramic sunroof. That's one of the real standout features with this truck. I like having it. So lots of stuff, a lot of good things. I have no complaints. Here we talked about it when I had the flash before that I think that the flash is kind of the sweet spot if you're looking for a good all-rounded electric vehicle truck and you want to have most of the features that you need and then you go up to the Lariat you get everything else that kind of makes things a little nicer especially today it's not super hot but having those ventilated seats on after doing about 45 minutes of loading this trailer up it's very nice so we loaded the trailer up we filled it completely packed up now, the trailer is actually about 1,800 pounds, and I think it says you can put about 2,600 pounds in it. So maximum basically towing that I'm doing would be 4,400 pounds. Now, there's no way I put 2,000 pounds in this even because most of our boxes, even though it looks full in the B-roll, a lot of them are full of air. It's a lot of empty stuff. Not that the boxes are empty, but there's, there's space that could have been used better. So we actually packed up all of the boxes, zero issues there. I had thought about putting some of our larger weather resistant boxes into the bed and then I have strap down cables to be able to make sure that they stay in place but it rained quite heavily. It's not raining right now but we did have quite a, a, a tremendous downpour when I first set off after leaving the house so I'm kind of glad I didn't even though the stuff that would be in there is, is for the most part not going to get damaged if it gets wet and then they're they are plastic you know I, I call them tote containers they're relatively water resistant but you know we've pretty much put everything that we needed to put into the trailer and then we've got a moving company coming tomorrow so i don't really need to <laughs> why am i going to use more more of my energy when i'm already paying for services so trailer is pretty full now let's talk about how this has been as i mentioned started off this morning 100 percent range I had about 471 kilometers, let's say, drove to go pick up the trailer, and then I reset everything. And once I hooked up the trailer and programmed it into the computer, it dropped my range down to about 247 kilometers. That's not great. We've talked about that before. We know that there is a range drop when it comes to putting a trailer on your vehicle that is a little bit less than half, so not too bad overall. However, 
it's been surprisingly good. So like I said, I reset it. We're, we're just cresting up to 60 kilometers right now. And we're averaging 35 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So it was 34 for the longest time. You know, I was in town for the beginning. And because there's so much weight on this, the regen braking, you know, I really don't have to do much. I just let go of the accelerator and I get most, if not 100%, of my regen braking back into the battery. So I wasn't using as much energy in town and now I've effectively been doing 84 kilometers an hour here along, uh, this is like County Road 3 in Southwestern Ontario. Now trailer says maximum is 88 kilometers an hour. I'm keeping it just a tiny bit under. Obviously you don't ever wanna do the maximum for anything that you're doing. I wanna not only maximize my range, but I also wanna make sure that my fragile stuff in the trailer there isn't destroyed. If not, my wife is gonna kill me. But we're at 212 kilometers of range left and I've used 14% battery, okay? And at 35 kilowatt hours, with a 131 kilowatt hour battery, I'm still going to get pretty darn close to that 400 kilometer range. Now, you add the 61 that we've done to 212, that's 278, 273 kilometers, whatever, right? Not bad at all. We're, we're doing very well. So do I have any issues about making the next 60 kilometers? Zero absolutely no concerns whatsoever. I will get to my destination. I will unload the trailer. I have a 25 kilometer ish drive to drop it off unless you haul through the app allows me to change the drop off because the, the place that I'm going, there was a closer place. It closes. I wasn't sure how long I was going to be needing it. So I have to go a little bit further to do a 24 hour drop off. But hey, if I could go closer and drop the, the trailer off, I'll get back, you know, if I, let's say we finish off with 100 kilometers left of range. If I get back to 300, 200, I mean, that's more than enough to get home. It's 120 kilometers to get home. So not bad overall. I mean, I'm quite impressed so far with this. Now, how does the vehicle perform with this trailer on it? If you've watched any videos on lightning trailering and you hear the person say, oh, I've got a trailer on here. It feels like nothing at all. That person has no idea what they're talking about because you feel the weight of this trailer. If you say you don't, I don't know, you shouldn't be trailering because this, you instantly feel you have an enormous amount of weight on the back of this vehicle. You have to drive it differently. You have to be safe. You know, it's, it's not fun and games, guys. If you haven't done any, any trailering before, if it's your first time, it's not that hard. Make sure you have the right equipment. We have a two inch ball hitch on the back with a locking pin, so I can put a key in there and make sure nobody can steal it. And then the U-Haul equipment's pretty good. Not only does it essentially just plop right on and lock into place, there's no chains. It's more like it's more like a cable that you cross over to attach to your emergency bars to make sure that if the hitch actually breaks or anything, there's still something holding on to your trailer. And then this trailer has an emergency brake. So should the trailer break off, and disconnect completely from the car, it'll trip like an emergency brake, like, you know, you pull on your e-brake and it'll just lock up the wheels and stop the trailer. And I don't have any worries about that because I know what I'm doing. I've trailered before. I've read the safety instructions for this vehicle and for the trailer. And that's what you gotta do when you put anything on the back of this. And then you have to understand that your braking distance has increased by like twofold at the very least. This is a heavy trailer and this is a heavy truck. If I am going to slow down, I turn off the cruise control or let off the accelerator and I try to get as much regen as I can and then you come to your stop and you gotta be very mindful of what's in front of you because you know if you haven't done this before, you instantly realize why people get upset if you're driving, you cut off a truck like a tractor trailer or anything that's towing anything, you're going to get honked at. There's a reason for it because the trailer adds an enormous amount of stopping distance. Now this trailer doesn't have an electronic braking system and this truck doesn't come with it. I would have had to go with the max trailering package to get the electronic parking brakes. I don't have that. I don't have my little ch -ch 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 thing on here that I usually see it's probably down here on the, on the center console. So I wouldn't be able to use it if this trailer had that option. But depending on what you're doing, you know, make sure you've got the right equipment for it. I made sure before I booked this, I booked this like two months in advance, knowing what I was gonna be doing, 
knowing I wanted the trailer and got everything set up ahead of time. I knew what I was going to be uh, requiring on my end in order to make this happen. So do your research first. But aside from the fact that your your acceleration is going to be slower, your range is a little bit lower, and your stopping distance is greatly, greatly decreased in the sense that you have to go a lot further in order to stop, it's been pretty good. I mean, I feel the weight, though. I mean, it feels just like monumental to have it, but it feels like you would any other pickup truck with a trailer on it. So it's good. So I like it. And you know what? So far, because the torque is instant, because these have two electric motors that are driving the wheels, I find that it's actually way smoother than if I were to drive a gas or diesel truck that I've done towing with before. This is just very linear. So when you're getting up to speed, you know, there's no gears to shift. It, it just goes. So you're really not sacrificing any of the downsides of trailering in those regards, right? You know, the vehicle has to shift, you're losing a little bit of momentum as you're going, and then the engine's got to get up to the peak, you know, torque or rev count. I don't have to do that with this. It's ready to go right away. So a much smoother experience when you're driving along. I've been quite impressed with this. And there's no added road noise. I'm not hearing anything. I don't feel like there's any major drag difference on this. I mean, you know, now we're at 36 kilowatts, 35. It's kind of going up and down. You know, we're, we're losing a little bit of efficiency, but truthfully, it's not as bad as I thought. I was expecting, you know, this would have done 30 on our test loop. It did better. And then I was expecting it to be doing like 60 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. But so far, I mean, we're more than halfway there and we still have 207 kilometers of range and 84% battery. So based on that information, we're going to be another 30, let's say 35 kilometers on county roads and then back in town. So I'm going to be getting some regen from there. I have a feeling that I will get to my destination, I will still have 65% of my range left, minimum. I'm thinking it's gonna be closer to 70. I'm pretty impressed with it. And then when it comes to the rest of the truck, I mean, we've talked about the Lightning quite a bit here on Test Drive. I've driven it a number of times. I wasn't really plussed by it when I first drove it, and then it really grew on me. And now it is a vehicle that I would seriously consider if I was in the market for a not only a pickup truck, but an electric pickup truck. I talked about this when we did the Silverado EV a couple months ago. I really appreciated how GM kind of went outside the box to make a vehicle that was a little bit different, had a little bit more functionality than a typical truck. Range was excellent. Performance was great. I wasn't quite as tight in it as I thought I would be, and I found that I really liked that truck. Getting back into the F-150, though, as much as the Silverado is a little bit more futuristic, a little bit more advanced in terms of what it can do. I, I still find myself gravitating towards the Lightning, just because it's just a little bit more traditional truck, right? It looks more or less like an F-150. It rides like one. It's got the space and comfort. You know, I'm not a huge fan of the tablet screen. I would much prefer the landscape style that they have on the gas versions of this. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. And I still think I would go with this. I mean, 102000 is kind of pricey. So maybe there's going to be some incentives, you know, not bad in terms of getting a good deal. Yeah, I, I spent a lot of time looking at the F-150 Lightning subreddit, and I have to say that there's some pretty good deals there in the States. So if you're looking for one of these, you got some good options. But yeah, I've been impressed. This has been a very stress-free experience to get this trailer from one area to another. So we're gonna pick this up a little bit later. I will continue my drive. Once we're a little bit closer to our destination, I'll give you another update. Now, while trailering is a lot of fun and pretty useful if you're buying a pickup truck and actually using it for its intended purposes, but that's not the only thing that you're gonna be doing with this. And that's why it's important to get the full picture whenever you're going to buy a new or used vehicle, whether it's something like this Ford F-150 Lightning or any other electric vehicle, which is why our sponsor today, RateMyEV.com, exists. It's a website where EV owners can give their true and honest opinions about how their vehicle has been to live with, whether they purchased, leased, it, financed, whatever it may be, it's the greatest place to go to get more information about the EVs that you're looking to purchase. Because there's only so much that we as journalists can do in the week that we've got these vehicles, but the people that actually buy them know them best. So whether you're an existing owner or you're looking to buy an electric vehicle, head on over to RateMyEV.com today to get a bigger picture 
for your next electric vehicle purchase or to share your own thoughts and opinions on the one that you've owned. Big thanks to them for sponsoring our episode here on Test Drive. All right, my friends, we're about six kilometers away from the destination, just less than that now. Seven minutes of driving left. I got to say, when I'm right, I'm right. I'm always right. 70% range left. We are not going to get to that 65. We're going to be closer to 70 here because now we're effectively in town. I'm maximum 60. I'm going to be doing quite a bit of regen braking as I get over to the destination. So, I mean, this has worked out way better than I had ever imagined. I'll be honest with you guys. I didn't know how it was going to go, right? This is all new to me, I mean, especially when it comes to an electric vehicle to tow with. I mean, every vehicle I've towed with before has been gas. So this was like one of those unknowns for me. And I was trying to figure out all sorts of contingencies. You know, do I take the highway? Which, you know, I found out when I picked up the vehicle, I could only do 88 kilometers, so I couldn't take the highway. But I could have at least stopped it on route and used one of the terrible charging stations there. I was then thinking, do I go to one of the dealerships in town? There's a couple of them. Most of them have car chargers and most of them have level two. Now it's 50 kilowatts, not super fast. So do I really want to spend like an hour sitting there just to get like a third of my range back? That was another, another option, but I mean, we're good. 70%, even if I go to drop this off at an extra 25, 30 kilometers, it's not going to bring me even close to the halfway point, which means I disconnect the trailer. Magically, I should have double the range. So I'm looking at about 350 kilometer range to get home. It's a it's a 120 kilometer drive. So I would say that this worked out well. You can see it's raining now quite a bit. So it doesn't help with the overall driving. You have to be very safe when trailering. And that's something that you know, we didn't talk about before, but I mean, aside from knowing the equipment, having the right tools, having the right knowledge, you know, making sure you're prepared. The other things you need to do is before you head out, make sure your load is secured. Everything's packed properly. In this case, the gate is closed and, and locked. So I know it's not gonna come out. And you gotta stop frequently, which I did. I didn't film it, but you stop, you check your equipment, make sure the, the trailer is still attached properly, the chains are still attached properly, your door or whatever is still closed, nothing has shifted. I mean, we had no issues because I loaded this correctly, 60% of the weight up front and then 40% at the lower half means I didn't have any issues with wind or buffeting, so I didn't have to worry about the, the trailer starting to sway back and forth, everything was great. I went over one or two like rough bumps, uh, so you know, We'll make sure when everything gets unpacked that it's still all in good shape, but I'm not too worried about it. I mean, the suspension on, on the trailer is like, all right. And yeah, I've got some fragile stuff here in the back seat of the truck, but yeah, it worked out really well. Look at that. So honestly, I mean, it depends on what you're doing, right? Like I mean, if you're going cross country with a trailer, no, right? If you're doing like what we did when we first moved to Quebec, or you know, around the time that I started doing new car stuff, on this channel like that was a 750 kilometer drive right that's it's not that's not gonna happen right if the infrastructure is there you can fast charge but this worked out great i mean most of the time you're not going to be doing a ton of distance with a trailer so if you're going to the cottage you've got a boat you've got a little camper you're 200 kilometers away from the cottage i think you're going to be fine especially if you have a level two at your cottage or wherever you're going, you're going to be fine. So this worked out great. I'm really happy about it. And again, I'm, I'm happy with the truck. I enjoy driving the F-150 Lightning. It's still my pick. You know, even though on paper, the Silverado EV, GMC Sierra EV, pretty cool. Got some nice features. They got the range. The range is big. I don't know. I'm still, I'm still gravitating towards this. But anyway, if you've enjoyed our trailering endeavors here on Test Drive, let me know, get in the comments, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have questions about this truck or anything that we're doing here on Test Drive. As always, we appreciate you watching and until next time, take care.